this week's fly, we're gonna do Andy Sabota's Swimmy Jimmy. Um, this is a very unique fly. I'll explain it a little bit more as we go along. But we're gonna do it in a rainbow trout looking pattern today. Um, I did this pretty much in rainbow brown trout and maybe some maybe some white fish looking you know like the gray and white variation um, but that's about the only colors that I really tied in for you bass guys um, the sky's the limit whatever don't let your imagination limit you on that one just tie whatever you want I mean this is a phenomenal pattern it's great reactionary strikes but same as always we're gonna go right where the barb of the hook starts to ascend just right in front of that for this one and we're going to tie in knock it off she's making noise we're going to tie in some white marabou Fox, cut it out quality production as always here <laughs> so we're going to tie in our white marabou and we're just going to wrap these space style all the way to the front until we fill it out two maybe I'm guessing three is what we're going to use on this so it's just the same as last week with the TNA I'm just going to tie these in, stem first, wrap them around. And just kind of open loop your marabou all the way to the front. Or as far as your marabou will go. Tie it off. Bring these all back. Just in front of where your hook starts, or your hook point is, is where I'll stop. And I'll tie in my next one. Advance your thread up to the front. Go ahead and half hitch. And then just same thing. Give it two or three wraps. Peel these fibers back. Feel that one just slip on me here. I gotta be careful on that next wrap until I get it tied off. There, we're good. So we'll just go ahead and trim that off and take this just shy of your halfway point on the hook. Right there ought to do it. You can see we have a nice little spay section with our two fibers that we have tied in. And then, like I said, just like last week, you want your more sparse feathers on the back hook and same as last week again we're going with the 2461 size 4 and size 2 now this one should take us all the way to the front Grab our last 
clone. It's been the right way for us. There we go. And it's not wanting to cooperate. It wants to sit on top of itself. And then if you can get just a few extra wraps right in the front of it, that kind of just fills out the bulk. Makes it a little easier to get the profile that you're looking for. If you can get that turn or two extra of, uh, of marabou in the front wraps, just gives you that little bit of extra bulk and you don't have to go back as far as you can see. I got maybe an eighth of an inch right there to where I peeled these back and I still get the overall effect of the fly that I'm looking for. So for the top of this, we're just going to take an olive brown, very wispy, um, thick plume and we're going to lay this right over the top. It doesn't have to reach the entire way back. Obviously you'd have a really good plume if it got the whole way back there. But just go ahead and throw this right in and tie over top of it. You want this laying right over the top portion. Or If you put your finger on this and you run it down, your spine of this is going to go right over the plume. Or right over the hook shank. Right down the center of it. So there we go, we can tie this off. If you want to, to really sexy this fly up and to make it look more like a rainbow, you can take um, a pink or a red marabou plume, ice dub, Sanyo's laser, whatever you want, and run lateral lines down there. But we're gonna save some time and not do that on this fly. So we're just gonna Tie this off, get a quick whip finish, and this is our back hook. We're set. Get out of the way there. Kind of preen all these back, and you can see there's a good looking space section for your back hook, and that's all it is. And then you have your one olive brown overlaid on top. So we're going to grab our... Now this is what makes this fly unique. Um, we'll see how well the camera's going to pick this up. I'll set it this way. And it looks like it's doing alright. There's a 30 degree bend on this. This direction. Obviously I don't take and measure the degree of the bend I just kind of eyeball it but you can tell obviously a 45 would be kicked more this way so I kind of go in between the two and then it's kind of dialed down just a touch I know the camera's not going to pick that up because I just take a Leatherman and I just tweak it down just a little bit but there's your 30 degree bend and a little bit down so we'll go ahead and throw this in and get our back section connected. Now that you got your back section in, Everything is tied in how you want it. Same thing as always. I mean, just right where the barb starts to ascend is where we're going to tie in this next section. And like I was saying, what makes this fly unique is this 30 degree bend on the front hook. And when you pull on it, it kind of flutters to the bottom. And when you let go, it kind of floats up to the top with the deer hair head that we're going to put in and the way it's trimmed and it's just a it, it, it's such a fun fly to fish I mean even if you don't get an eat on it you just watch this thing flutter and it's like 
I don't know, it, it's entertaining in itself, but you will get the eats on this. I mean, it, it elicits some very aggressive strikes when you do get a fish to react on it. But we're gonna continue with this. Same thing as the back. We're gonna just take our marabou and wrap it space style. All the way to the front. Two wraps, peel everything out of your way. Continue to the front as much as your material will allow and tie it off. Ah, you so and so. Well, it almost got away from me. We saved it. We saved it. So right to the point of the hook is where we're going to tie this one off. And just like last week with the TNA, um, don't get too concerned because you can still see the bead through this. As we put the rest of them in, it's going to fill out even more. Tie in your marabou, half hitch it. Now be mindful of where your bend is. The bend, I put it on the third way point. So third of the way back is where I bend it. I don't want any marabou going past that because that's where I'm gonna start my collar. That's where I'm gonna, the head's gonna be. And then when we trim it, We'll, we'll show you how that's done obviously once we get to that point, but I don't want any marabou going past that So my bend is the reference point for this fly and Then we're just going to go ahead and continue our marabou up to the front All right, now we're just shy of where our bend starts to, to kick on this. So the last thing we're gonna do before we start putting in the deer hair is we're just gonna lay this olive brown right over top to where it marries over. And we'll spin it this way. When it's wet, you can see it's gonna marry over and it's gonna give a consistent profile of olive brown over the top. And if you were putting in the marabou or the uh, 
rainbow accents on this. This is where you would do it along the side again. Um, just to give that lateral line, but I, I very rarely tie this fly that way. I normally just go with the olive brown and white and I call it good. Every once in a while I'll put them in there just to kind of make the fly look a little more realistic, but I don't really feel that it's necessary. This fly does enough dancing and moving on its own to where you don't have to really make it that realistic. So what we're going to do now is it's going to be a two-toned head and it's going to have the same theme that the rest of the fly has. So we're going to take this uh, olive brown deer hair and this is going to be the top half of the fly. So we're going to we have it pre-stacked, cleaned, and all that. Now find your hook point and the barb. That's my reference point for where my collar is going to be. And I'm just going to take this down. And matter of fact, I got ahead of myself. Find where your reference point is. Okay, measure this out. So hook point and the barb somewhere in between there and just go ahead and take this and pinch it cut it off this is going to be your collar for the top half so we're just going to go one two and then a third wrap go ahead and push this down kind of spread everything out and then you can go one or two wraps right in front of it, but then go right back to where you tie that in because we're going to put a white collar on the underside. We got this pre stacked. And this is where this fly gets a little bit difficult because it's bent, but. A little bit of practice, you can get her down. Go ahead and measure this out. And we'll go ahead and trim this and set our white on the underneath side. Same thing. Give it one, two, and a third wrap. Just kind of go on the underside. I got a little bit carried away with some excess there, but that's all right. It'll all get covered up. So now we're going to go right in front of where this head's starting. And throw your deer hair across the table. That's fine. No big deal. So we're going to take another pinch. of the olive brown and I'm going to flip this around in my hand to where the tips are going to be in my right hand okay we're going to just clean this out run it through your tongue get all of your excess junk out of there go ahead and cut your tips off And it's just like the dungeon, the white girl, um, any of the deer hair flies that I've done, the cougar. It's the same thing. So I'm not going to go in too far in elaborating what we do here. But just like the white girl, you don't want this to, to spin. You don't want it to spin. You want, every, you want your green to stay up top and your white to stay down below. So to keep it from spinning, keep your wraps loose and then just go ahead and pull and then as you get done pulling, before it starts to spin, just take your wraps right in front. You can see how this stacks. See how it's stacked there and then your white is still on your bottom and I'm going to retrieve.
care that I've been across the room, so we're back in business now. And we'll go ahead and get this cleaned up. This is deer belly hair. You can't really get, well, you can't get white Primo strips. Uh, it's just, you can't dye it that color. You have to have the belly hair. So it's a little bit shorter. Um, it can be a little trickier to work with just because you don't have as much material, but the bonus is it is so hollow that it is very easy to stack and to spin. Uh, the guys that do the bass bugs, um, all of that deer hair work, that's all done with this belly hair. So we're just going to take the same thing, clean this up, and I'm not going to cut the tips just because, like I said, I'm working with less material. And we're gonna stand our olive up and kind of get it out of the way. And we're gonna get one loose wrap, two, and then the third one, I'm gonna pull tight. I'm keep, you can see I'm keeping my fingers from my left hand on this. That way it doesn't spin and I can still pull tight. And I can just peel it underneath, bring your thread in front, give a couple loose wraps and then really pull tight. That just locks all of this stuff behind your thread in place. It's not going to spin on you now. You can do whatever you want. This material, this deer hair is locked in place. It's not going anywhere. Those two or three tight wraps in front are critical to getting this fly to have the two-tone head. So we got one more stack on the top and the bottom and we'll have this fly finished up and we'll get up to trimming everything and that's another portion that's critical to how this fly responds. Same thing, just clean your deer hair and for these I don't cut the tips because I don't change it in my hand. I keep everything the way that it is. Just make sure that you're working with the most hollow portion of your deer hair. The tips aren't hollow. They're they won't flare, they won't spin if you try to work with them like that. Work with the center section, the hollow portion, keeping my hands tight to it to where it won't spin. Peel all of this back and try not to get the white mixed in too much. with your olive. Some mix is going to happen. It's inevitable. I mean, unless you're just a professional with deer hair. Some of these bass guys, you see some of the stuff that they do. I mean, it's unbelievable. I can't imagine the hours that they have spinning and tying with deer hair. I mean, they make my stuff look like I tie it with my feet. But uh, <laughs> it's, their, their stuff is very impressive. Very impressive, but we're going for just a little two-tone effect. I'm not trying to put black dots in an orange head and any of that stuff, so they'll probably laugh at my work. So same thing, don't cut my tips off on the white and get one, two, a third, kind of a tighter wrap, and peel all this stuff underneath. Peel your white under your olive, and before you finish this, same thing as before, give it the one, two, uh, maybe three wraps, and then just pull tight on it. Now we'll peel all this out of the way and we'll whip finish. some strands caught in there. Good. Try and get 
It's not going to let me do it. I'm going to try and get one more wrap in there. Or one more wood finish. Just because I like doing two. I don't know why. I've always done it, so. I like two in for a whip finish, but we're going to go with a one just because that GSP started to split on me slightly. So now we're going to go into the trimming on this. And I'm going to get a fresh razor blade. Because this is a crucial portion to it. How I'm going to start this off is the top and the bottom are going to be curved. Okay, so we're going to go right back. to our collars. Just take your blade, push it right through. Don't try and get it all at once. Just kind of work your way through there. Get the overall shape that you're looking for and then find your collar. Put your thumb down and work your way back to the collar. That way you're not cutting any of it off, but you're still getting the overall shape that you want. So now our collar's starting to come around to us. And just take your razor blade right back to your thumbnail. And you can see the collar's starting to show itself. Now do the same thing with the underside. So I'm going to find my collar. And I'm just going to push this right through the white. Like I said, don't worry about the overall shape in the very beginning. You can always fine tune that. Just get the, just get the rounded curves that you're looking for on the top and the bottom. And we'll take this right to the back. Now, Here's where the trimming becomes a little bit difficult because you're working with the curve in the hook. You have to be mindful of the curve because when all of the when the deer hair is just fluffed out, it's easy to forget that there's a curve in this hook. So what you're gonna do is just take your razor blade, and I like to turn the fly on its side. And I'm just going to take a straight cut back, nice and smooth, all the way through. And then the same thing, I'll just kind of put my thumb right there and run it right to my thumbnail. That way I'm still keeping the collar, but I'm able to get rid of all of these hollow hairs that get in the way of your collar. And I just kind of peel that back. a nice flush cut on this and then the same thing on the other side now your bend is right here so be careful because if you go too close you can wind up coming right to the hook so stay back just a little bit on these first couple of trims and don't get too aggressive with this just stay back a little bit Clean your razor blade up and just work this through real slow. Do not rush on this until you're really comfortable with trimming these because it would be a shame to go through, tie this entire fly and then mess it up on the head. So just kind of work your way through this, get the two sides done and then we're going to go back and reshape the top portion of our fly. So we're just going to take this, you can see we have a pretty clean head. I'm not going to get real picky and clean the collar up. I'll save you guys the time of doing that. I'm just going to get the overall shape. I'm going to push my razor blade right through this, right to the top. You can see how you have that nice rounded section for the top of the head. And then the same thing, I'm gonna come on the underneath side 
I'm going to give this one last trim just going right through this. There's a couple wild ones. I'm going to run a second cut through there. I'm starting to get picky. I can feel it. Alright, I'm going to let it go before there's nothing left. So you guys still have the overall idea of what we're trying to do with this fly. And then the last thing that we're going to do is take two 7 millimeter uh, fish skull fire eyes. And we're going to put these on either side of the fly. But there you have it, minus a few last minute trims that I would do to clean the fly up a little bit more and get rid of some of the hollow fibers um, that are in the collar's way. That is Andy Sabota's Swimmy Jimmy. Um, like I said, take this thing out, swim it, just watch it flutter, watch it dart and dive. Um, very, very good pattern, very fun to fish. Um, but if you guys have any questions, want me to go back and redo any of these steps, uh, just let me know and I'll try and clarify some things. I know I kind of rushed through this fly a little bit, especially on the deer hair portion, but I'll go back and redo anything if you guys have any questions. But uh, thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you next week.